Yep. Just so that we have a record. Um, yeah, so welcome everyone. And um, thanks very much for coming along to our first Landcare Checks In kicks off for 2022. Um, so we thought this could be a bit of a different, fun way to start off the year and find out what you've planned and shared and some ideas we have and find out how you're all feeling. And Jacqueline, our Executive Officer, will start with the Acknowledgement of Country. Thanks, Kylie. Yes, look, I'd just like to acknowledge that we're all standing on the traditional lands of the uh, original custodians of the country all around the state of WA and we pay our respects to their elders present past and emerging. Thanks Jacqueline. Um, so we thought um, as a start off if you could just put I mean we've mostly introduced ourselves but if you could just put your name in the chat. Actually if Everyone could just turn off their mute. mics at the moment, mute their mics. That would be good if there's a bit of feedback from someone. Not sure who. Um, okay. Um, if you could just... Oh, we've still got someone. All right. I think that's good. That's good. Yep. Um... Okay, if you could just put in the chat um, your name and what First Nations country you were on, if you know that, hopefully, um, and then uh, what town or city you're from or what group or organisation you're from or area of interest. So just a couple of those things would be good. <laughs> um, you don't have to write an essay. <laughs> just gives us an idea. I know you've all registered, but it just lets the other participants know who's on here. Um, and while you're all doing that, I'll just hand over to Jack, Jacqueline or Jack to give us a brief outline of the new ideas for the WA Landcare Network for 2022. Thanks, Kylie. Yes, look, we've made a few minor changes just to the operational way that we are at Wallen. And you might have seen already, we have a very interesting new version of our newsletter called Landcare News. Basically, you'll get the same sort of breadth of, of material, but we'll tell you a bit more about what we're doing in the advocacy space, direct a bit more communication to our members. So if you're not a member, that might be something that you might want to look at doing. Um, we're theming our events to work in with the events that happen across the year and, and they, they appear on the calendar. We've had our wetlands theme. This month is regenerative agriculture, for example. Middle of the year will be Aboriginal collaboration. And as those special event um, times of each month come up, they're the themes that we'll be tying into. We'll be sharing events that relate to those on our Facebook page. And we're looking and a new element of Landcare, as well as our Landcare checks in, it's called Landcare Build Skills. And we are looking to funding um, to support capacity building for individuals and groups right across the Landcare sector. I'm working with um, Lottery West, State NRM, uh, and a few other stakeholders to see what we can bring you in the form of Landcare Build Skills across the coming year. So um, thank you very much. Thanks very much, Jack, for giving us a quick overview. Um, so we'll hopefully have time to have a bit more interaction and chat. But the first thing I thought today we tried using is some of you might, hopefully a few of you might have used it before. We're going to try using Mentimeter. So this is um, the first time I've facilitated using it. So please bear with me. Um, just put your hand up if you've used it before. Yeah, a few of you have, a few of you haven't. Okay, that's fine. So you'll need to, it's probably easiest to do on your phones. So if you um, get out your phones um, and I'll share my screen. And if you go to um, www.menti.com, 
And while you're doing that, I'll share my screen. Okay, so can you all see my screen with the WL Landcare Network 2022 Landcare Checks in kickoff? Yep. Okay. So I'll read the code out for anyone who, who can't see the screen. The code you're looking to put in is 67658042. That will take you to our presentation. Thank you very much, Jack. So how's everyone going? Has is any everyone got it or anyone still having trouble? You might just have to take your mics off mute so I can hear if anyone's having trouble. Has everyone got it? Mm -hmm. um, I haven't, but we're on satellite, so <laughs> our band is problematic. So I'm not sure it's going to load. It's trying to, but I don't think it will. Look, okay. what we will what we'll do for anyone who can't get in, we will send you a PDF out, and you can Lovely. fill in the questions that way. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Brett needs me to repeat the code. The code is 67658042. Is everyone else ready to go? Anyone else having problems? Sorry, I can't see the chat screen at the moment. So let me have a look, Kylie. Sorry. Um, no, looks good, Kylie. Okay. All right. So we'll start off with the first question. Okay. The first one hopefully is fairly easy because we've given you six options. Um, how are you or your group, if you want to represent them, feeling going into 2022? So you've got six options. So just, uh, I think you can select one or two um, and then just press submit at the bottom of it when you've put your response in and the responses will automatically show on the screen once you've selected yours. So we'll see how everyone's feeling going into 2022. And for those of you who can't pull it up, hopefully you can see on Kylie's screen the nature of the questions. And look who's winning. Excited, lots planned, can't wait to get stuck in, is taking the lead yeah. so far. That's good. That's that good. is good. But feel free to be honest and however you... Have we got a few more to come in? Two, four, five, nine. We've got 10 respondents there. We've got someone who's exhausted and still getting over last year. We know how that feels. Yep. <laughs> and uh, a couple plodding, um, plodding along with the usual stuff. Some already starting to feel a bit overwhelmed. Isn't that such huh. a factor of the environmental space? Yes. You know, as soon as we get back in, there's just seems so much that we have to tackle. 6, 10, 14, 15. That's probably as close as we'll get, Kylie, I think. Okay. All right. Well, thanks very much for answering that question. But good to see lots of people are excited and can't wait to get stuck in. And, yeah, I can see there's a couple that are struggling and would like a bit of support. So that's what we're here for. We're all here to help each other out. So we'll move on to the next question. And I... I will um, provide as part of our, we'll put the results from this onto our um, website after the yeah. check. So you'll be able to see the results. Okay, so next question. 
what would you like to get out of land care checks in in 2022? So you can choose up to three options. So there's eight different options that you can see there. And then just press submit once you've chosen your three. So look down the list. <laughs> Okay, lots of responses coming in. So far, it looks like the top one's discussing practical issues and challenges. And then we've got quite a three on five responses. Uh, learn about topics from ex experts, discuss hot topics with peers and meet and network with other land carers. We've also got one of each of hear about new and in innovative land care approaches and find out about funding and how to apply for grants and webinar like presentations. So I'll just give another 10 seconds if people haven't had a chance to put their response in. Does anyone need more time? Kylie, I'll just jump in and say that Stephen Jones has joined us and I've just put in the chat for him how to get into Menti. So he should be able to access that fairly soon. All right, good. Excellent. So, yeah, so your feedback from this is a lot of what you'd like to get out of check, um, check, land care checks in is discussing practical issues and challenges. So we'll... We'll try to um, focus our topics on things like this um, and also the other ones that have come up high. And uh, that means I get an entire bag of Fred of Rocks because that was my bet that that would be the most popular one. I think, <laughs> yeah, really. mine too, I think. <laughs> it's really what we get together for, isn't it, is to share that practice experience and um, be able to support each other with practical issues and challenges. Mm. Mm, it's great. Okay, so we might move on to the next one now. Okay, so this has uh, is a calendar that we've put together with our um, themes for the year, draft themes, draft calendar. So looking at that um, draft calendar, what are your three preferred topics? And you can choose from what's suggested on that calendar. Those themes are quite generic. So we have kind of gone into more specifics, but that might be a bit hard to look at on a screen. So choose from what's suggested, or you can suggest some of your own and you can be more specific if you want about those. And it's basically just choose one word if you can, one or two words. Um, in each line you can choose up to three but because it's going to make a word cloud so um, do you all understand yeah there doesn't seem to be a box there for us to enter into Kylie it's it's down the bottom oh it's down the bottom sorry thank you that's more than enough that we'll have to chew on any more and we'll get swamped <laughs> Annabelle has just joined. So Annabelle, we're doing a Menti Meter uh, segment. So if you want to join in, it's www.menti.com. And then the code 
should be on the screen, on my screen that I'm sharing. Perfect, thank you. I thought I was going to be really subtle and just pop in um, a bit late. Obviously, that didn't work. Thanks, Kylie. Um, no worries. I'll jump on board now. Thank you. Thank you. There's no hiding around here. <laughs> you can't hide Holding in up. land care. There's not enough trees left. Sorry. Mm. <laughs> okay. Well, we've got a few coming through. So far, biodiversity is the biggest one. Mm. And that's a very all-encompassing topic. So we can... Followed closely by revegetation and healthy soils by the look of things, then ecosystem restoration. Amazing. Great. And then Aboriginal collaboration is up there as well, and so is climate change. So, yep. Climate, biosecurity, power of land care, water. Oh, we've got more coming in. Regenerative ag. Mm. Yep. Okay. Biosecurity, that's, um, that's a hot topic for us at the moment. We've been discussing that earlier today to see where we can basically weave into everything that we do but um, we'll be looking at bringing in a biosecurity update on a range of things throughout the year. So we'll keep you posted on those as well. Mm. Supply chain for reveg. Ah, that's interesting too, isn't it, Kylie? We've been talking yes. about um, the seed audit for the state to make sure that we're going to be able to keep up. It's all well and good to have people out there wanting oh, yeah. to plant trees, but we need seed stock. Yeah, and quality seed stock too. Quantity and quality. So there's still a few more coming in. And I can see there are a few double ups. Unfortunately, with this word cloud, you have to put the exact same word for it to come up so that I can see there are there's regenerative ag and regenerative agriculture that have come up as two separate, but I'm super. We'll we'll um, we'll amortise those, won't we, Carly? When we send the results out, when we put them up, if we can, <laughs> I'll see what I can do with Menti. All right. We Is haven't that... got we haven't oh. got uh, collaboration with commercial interests. Oh, that's interesting. Good point. I'll note that down. We can leave them by the nose or talk nicely or a big stick. You can add that in if you'd like to. I don't know how. Oh, who's that? Sorry? Stephen. Oh, Stephen. Have you um, joined up Menti yet? No, Menti. I've done nothing. I've just got on the Zoom. Okay. If you've got your phone there, you can go... Go to um go to a browser and go to www.menti.com. Ah, uh, I can see it. I was just going to listen, so okay. don't worry. Just All on. right, if you're happy to listen, that's fine. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. Okay, this one is the two biggest issues or challenges for your group or you this year, or last year if it's still relevant and once again it just put in one or two words in each line um, and it'll come up as a word cloud I think you can submit multiple responses but just one or two words in each line
Lots of challenges coming through. Labor, staff, no staff, volunteer workload, lack of time, COVID-19, workload, ongoing funding, isolation, mm. aging volunteers, access to land to plant, that's a huge one. Mm, affordable seed, lack of expert advice. These are really useful people. Yeah, Thank you so much because these will really help our advocacy and funding proposals to find some money to help address these things in your groups on your patch. Yes, so keep sending them through. <laughs> There's a lot and uh, it's uh, understandable. Yeah. Yeah, that's really helpful. Seedling and seed supply, tropical cyclone Saroja, climate change, affordable seed. Weeds are always there and always will be, sad but true. Yeah. <laughs> weeds, weeds, weeds. Plant resources, COVID. Land clearing, funding for employment, yep. Increased regulation. Uh huh. I'll note that one down too. Ongoing funding, education of the wider community. Mm, there's certainly a lot there. Funding and COVID 19 and two few volunteers seem to have got the top place at the moment and weeds. Yeah. And I think if we look deeply into the volunteers, we'll note that the problem across Australia in the um, land care sector is ageing volunteers and just that lack of uh, the needed numbers of young people coming in. So that's something we're working on as well. Mm. Okay. Um, oh, yep, there's still a few more coming through. We'll just give a few more seconds. Does anyone need more time? Oh. <laughs> Obviously. Wow, this is a real, a real word cloud, this one. Some of them will be sort of doubled up, but we'll be we'll be able to see the common threads yeah. through it all. And there's a really interesting one there, lack of budget in DBCA has mm. implications on so many of our activities. Yeah. Yeah, this is great. This is really, really important and this will help us. Okay. Well, I think we'll leave that one for there. And like I said, we will um provide a copy of this um, on our website after the session probably not immediately after but hopefully oh dear Kylie's frozen have I I'm sorry everyone no if you're back you're back Kylie you were frozen for a moment there was I oh, so no good. you you weren't frozen I was sorry move on <laughs> <laughs> okay the next one is the biggest events coming up this year for you, your group, which may be of interest to the wider network. So try to not just put, yeah, put something that you think might be of interest to relevant a bit wider, maybe something regional or, um, but if you haven't got anything, then just, Wims Festival. What is Wims Festival? Should I know what this is? <laughs> Might have to get the person who wrote that to tell us what it is. I'll, I'll look oh, it up. I'm back. <laughs> That's a community festival. And um, oh, all the land care people in the hills have a big tent. And we get a lot of interest from people that thousands of people come through the festival. 
and we have got the undivided attention. We park by the bridge that they have to cross over, the walkway bridge, and we nab them as they go through. It's a well worthwhile festival. When, when's that, Stephen? Uh, about October, end of last week of October. Okay, and where's it held? At uh, Pioneer Park, uh, Mount Helena. Okay. Yep, feel free to put your things in. Even if they're not huge and regional, we're still interested to find out what you're doing, what things you're coming up this year. Oh, the Australian Native Plant Society Biennial Conference in Kiama, New South Wales in September. Mm. That could be a good one. Bush Forever Party is their 21st, is it? 21 years, Bush Forever. Wow. Fan fantastic. Mm. Small property landowner online workshops on sustainability. Getting started with carbon farming online workshops. Yeah, I think we'll be having a few more online workshops this year, but we still want to do some face-to-face -face things too, because I think people are still keen to see each other in the real as well. <laughs> They're all coming through. Healthy soils and permaculture, building a carbon farm workshop, supporting several land orders to develop restorations. Winter rain, oh, right. yeah. <laughs> water course management, upland wetland planting, wildflower walk. So if there's something that will be of interest to the wider network, and even if you haven't got it organised yet, with exact dates but once you do know the information you can send it through and we can put it in our newsletter if it's especially if it's of interest to the wider network if it's a regional type thing um i have to say everyone it's really positive and encouraging seeing this look at look yeah. at what's in train for this year some fantastic opportunities there for people to get involved in community land care it's wonderful yeah Yes, certainly lots happening. I can see why back to the start, why some people are excited and get, can't wait to get stuck in and other people are feeling overwhelmed already because there's lots happening already. Lots of ideas. Okay, I'll just give a couple more seconds for that one. Does anyone need more time? Just another 10 seconds, maybe. And um, we might get in touch if we need further information about some of these things, or you can feel free to email it through to us. First Nations Consulting and Cultural History, planting 200,000 seedlings, gorilla weeding bees, wow supporting landholders to develop restoration projects on their land, nest box building, land care grants and coast care grants. Okay, oh, yeah. they're all coming through. They're all weaning, I love that. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think we'll move on to the next question, which I think might be the last question. Okay, so the last question is, how can we support you and your group better this year? And there's six choices and you can choose up to three responses. Landcare checks in, regional forums, regional catch-ups, greater social media engagement, landcare coordinators catch-ups online or advocacy.
Kylie, in your mind, um, what's the difference between regional forums and regional catch-ups? Well, regional forums would probably be more um, where you have like presentations and um, on a topic or whereas regional catch-ups would be more networking and workshopping and um, and maybe showing around, showcasing some of your projects and stuff. Okay. So I guess the regional catch-ups might be more of an outdoor thing. Um, Okay. So I can see that call for advocacy there is nearly as strong as the call for land care checks in. And um, mm. that's what we're hearing regularly too, that, um, that need for a voice and the collective voice that is the goal of Wallen to give you is that we gather up on the hot topics what you want to say and who we need it to be said to and advocate on behalf of everyone. And you'll be seeing a bit more communication about that over the next 12 months directly from me. Um, and possibly as once a quarter, but certainly in response to hot topics that come up or into things that we have a number of members raising. So thank you for that. That's great. Mm. And we love that people love Landcare Checks In because we love it too. Mm. Good to see social media got a zero. <laughs> <laughs> it probably depends who you're talking I hate about. it. <laughs> Okay, so I'll just give a couple more seconds, but I think everyone's probably finished that one. Okay, well, we'll I'll leave it up there anyway. So we've got through all that actually quite a lot quicker than I expected, which is good because we've got more time to chat. So we can talk a bit more about some of the things that came up um, and we can open it up for a bit of a discussion. Um, just on that last slide, um, obviously the Landcare checks in, um, you've given us an idea of your preferred outcomes and topics in questions two and three. Um, obviously for you guys, the day and time that we've chosen for the Landcare checks in works for you. Um, we thought we'd try this time instead of the Monday um, if anyone's got any comments on whether this day or time is um, good or bad or something that might be better, then please feel free to let us know. Um, with the regional forums, we're looking for um, groups to host those forums and suggested topics. So if you or your group has got an idea and a topic, um, please let us know. Uh, and also the advocacy one, that's a big one that's come up. Um, what sort of advocacy you would like us to um, bring for you and do for you. Um, so do you want to open up and if anyone's got any questions, comments on what we've been through. Um, feel Holly, free. can we go back to the to all seeing all of us now? Otherwise we can't see anyone. Oh, yes, send all of us. So close out of the um, stop mm -hmm. sharing the screen. Yep. Thank, yes. thank you. Sure. That's right. a good idea. Okay. Everyone's back in. Has anyone got any questions or comments on any of the things that came up? Brett, Brett has a question. Over to you, Brett. I think one of one of the things that um, I noticed in all of the responses is that there's no no engagement with local government mm. and, and I think local government has a has a lot to a large role to play 
in um, land care as, as such, given mm -hmm. the influence that it has on a lot of the public land around the place. Mm. Yes. Does anyone else want to comment on that? That's a big, big point. I can't see any hands up. You can just jump in if someone wants to add. Um, to I, I, so Kylie and I were at um, the umbrella group on of groups on um, last Wednesday, and one of the things that came up there, good, very good point, Brett, um, was about particularly in the in the urban areas, the number of friends of groups who actually work with their local local councils. And one of the things that um, Walga is looking at doing is running a program they hope in May, yeah. and it's for officers of the, of the local government authorities, but it's about how to work, sort of like best practice models, but how to work more effectively with and more supportively with friends of groups that are working with them. So that was interesting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. very supportive. That's great. It's yeah. an interesting point, isn't it? And I, I wonder if we can internally give some thought to how we might um, have some sort of higher level conversation with Wolga and see what they see as a way to create um, more partnerships or more effective partnerships with local government. Um, my experience has been they're a bit of a closed door sometimes. They're very protective of their patches and their funding. Um, and, and really the way through that is about, you know, building those relationships and finding um, mutual interest, things that benefit us, that benefit them. So we can certainly take note and, and put that on the list of jobs. And just, just with local government, sorry, still, you probably all know that on the 25th of February is the closing date for the WA local, sorry, for, yeah, the local government reform um, consultation. And there's a whole lot of stuff in there that also you can guide them to being more supportive towards groups, as well as looking at, um, at transparency and decision-making and things like that. Oh, fantastic. Is there a link you could share, Colma? I think I've found that the uh, problem with the local government is that once you get involved with a project with them, they want to run it. Uh, and that creates a whole heap of, of problems because our groups tend to be fairly open and, and uh, they tend to work well as a group. But uh, as soon as somebody from outside comes in and starts to push you around, uh, you, wonder who, you wonder whether they really understand what the project's all about. Uh, I think, yeah, there's some examples of them working very well with groups and there's probably some examples of them not working so well. But, yeah, I think that's why um, this Walgo um, best practice that uh, Coleman was mentioning um, will be a good thing um, because it will get the, the, gov the local governments that are doing a good job to show the ones that maybe aren't what um, what can be done. So, a good idea to talk with um, Melanie and Walga about that because they run seminars and things, and she organises them. But she, yeah, I think the no, issue I'm... is is largely cultural and can be historic as well. Kylie, I, th I think one of the real issues outside of the metropolitan area is just the resources that yeah. a lot of local government local governments have to actually engage um, with groups, but also the, the level of knowledge that they have about, um, about land care, not ac activities so much as land care techniques is, is quite limited. I agree with you. Yeah, that's very correct. Has anyone... Can I just grab a surname for Melanie, please? Sorry? Can oh. I grab a surname for Melanie if oh. you have one? Not if you don't, but if you did, that was all. Oh. Melanie, Melanie Davies. Melanie Davies. Thank you. 
an another issue, um, given the, the interest on in advocacy, advocacy for biodiversity conservation is a big issue. Sure is. And loss of biodiversity is a huge issue around, around the state, particularly the southwest. Yep. We've been in conversation with state NRM about the lack of a statewide um, NRM strategy. And there is one that was developed up in 2014 called 100 Years of Biodiversity Conservation for Western Australia that looks quite comprehensive. And we've asked them to have a look at it and to get an understanding of why that can't be updated and applied because there's still no good baseline data and vegetation um, detailed description, data management to tell us about the loss that's going on, even though they continue to issue clearing permits. So it's it's something that we are constantly pushing on is, is the loss of biodiversity, particularly in terms of the offset process um, and looking at how we can create meaningful conversation with government on those things. And obviously as a voice, the more members we have, um, the more likely we are to get listened to, but we're certainly um, nurturing those political relationships so that we can have conversations with some depth um, about policy and legislation that continues to cause biodiversity loss in WA. Declan, it's, it's interesting you raise that document because it's um, the original consult, uh, draft report for that was actually signed off by Mark McGowan. That's um, right. And in there, there was a whole series of, of um, strategy or strategies, I suppose, to be achieved by 2029. I've recently sent a letter to the Premier um, asking what progress has been made with that, and I'm yet to receive a response. I know it's frustrating, isn't it, Brett? And look, in the conversation that I had with State NRM, I catch up with them once a month to talk about a range of things, but. I keep pushing for the strategy because Western Australia doesn't have regional, we have a regional bodies model that is different to the rest of the country. A lot of them have catchment management authorities, don't they? And they're vested and they have um, direct streams of funding from state and feds because of their statutory nature. Because we don't have that, it's much harder for us to access the funds that we need. And so part of the fed statement is for them to bilaterally, state and federally support us um, we need that statewide strategy and that's what we're pushing in it. And the response I got was that they have now employed a consultant <laughs> to look at the strategy um, who is from outside NRM because they want fresh eyes on the strategy. They don't want someone who's been in the space for a long, long time. That 100-year strategy has gone into the mix of what's being looked at. So there is progress. It's slow, Brett, and it's frustrating, but at least... You know, we're moving forward towards that point. And without a strategy, as Mary's saying, you know, the fear is that this, this loss will just continue unabated. Yeah. Jacqueline, we've also been, well, a lot of the work that we do is is submissions and appeals on, on land clearing. Um, I had a recent meeting with with the DG from Dwer, um because we'd expressed the opinion that they're more um, focused on approving clearing applications than conserving vegetation. And um, to demonstrate that, I think there's very few clearing applications that are refused and most of them are granted when there's no information at all mm. about the vegetation that they're going to sure affect. Is right. Yeah, it's a grave concern. Um, it absolutely is. And we are looking, we're talking to Greening Australia and a couple of other parties at the moment about the new green jobs rollout from Dwer. And our concern about that is the integrity of the offsets process. We're trying to get the maps of the values of what has been cleared by developers or government. And that's hard to get. It shouldn't be as hard to get. The transparency of the process needs fixing. Um, and then the, the, the issue is, of course, to do an offset, the property has to be covenant, covenanted in perpetuity. And farmers at the moment, landholders, are very reluctant to lock their land up, the majority of them that we've spoken to, simply because 
of the carbon market. So they've got other opportunities to generate income from locked up land where a conservation covenant is not necessarily affording them that and it interferes necessarily with their succession planning for the properties. So the offset process is a very um, big question and our members will be getting some communication about that as well because we may want to work with CCWA on a bit of a campaign going forward. So we'll yeah. be looking to you for your input. Have have um, a talk. Have a talk um, to Keith Bradby because he's he distributed a, a paper last night, um, which is talking about the the um, monitoring of vegetation cover in Western Australia, and he's looking to get inf um, comments on that paper. So I'd suggest if you get hold of Keith, um, he can get you a copy of that document. Terrific, thank you. Nick, you wanted to say something? <laughs> yeah, the, um, the board of the Conservation Council are actually looking into uh, a biodiversity campaign, um, which is something that's been demanded by our members. We haven't done enough in that area and been too tied up with climate change and gas projects. Um, so they are looking at um, what that might look like and how to resource it. <laughs> Um, so hopefully we'll hear about that in the next couple of months. The other thing is the BC Act is actually up for review, according to the Act itself, now. Right. So um, we did ask them some questions last year, and because they've been implementing it in two stages, they said we haven't finished the second stage yet, but um, the Act actually says 221 was when the BC Act should be uh, reviewed and we've also asked about what that process would be and we still haven't got an answer about that yet. Um, yeah, probably by a consultant, yeah. Um, so uh, we want to make sure that that's not what happens. Um, and, uh, you know, that our BC Act is, is the worst piece of conservation legislation in the developed world. Um, so we need to do something about it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yeah. So, yeah, um, hopefully towards the middle of this year, um, we'll get some answers and actually have a, um, a, say a timeline to actually do something. Thank you. And can you, can you just mute if you're not speaking because we're getting quite a bit of feedback in some spots. Thank you. And I'm guilty of it too, so no problems. We all do it. Um, it sounds like, you know, there's quite... A feeling there that um, there's a couple of campaigns. We certainly would be working with CCWA. I know Maggie well, and we're meeting next week on a number of things, so that will come up. Um, but it looks like we might be putting something together and come out to members and indicating to you whatever action um, we might be asking you to take to support the development of the strategy happening more quickly, um, the review of the Act coming out more quickly, and a really thorough review of the offset process in this state. Which is flawed. Yeah. Can, can I just add that also um, DVCA are doing, um, we're drafting regional conservation plans for the next five years. Um, I think there are nine, nine regions, so they're um, drafting one for each region. The Swan region will be one of them. Uh, yeah, so whether they've got anything decent in them, who knows, but yeah. And just to add to Mary's comment, um, Last time there was lots of decent stuff in them, but they didn't actually release it to the public. So we also need to put pressure on them to actually release them. They, they remain drafts. Yeah, they were drafts only. <laughs> yep. Okay. Um, now I can see that Colm has put in the chat the information about the local government reform. Um, and she's going to send a something to me, a quick template. Um, and we've also got something else in the chat. I have to report this, the Shire of Chittering in particular, the City of Swan and Shire of Jinjin to a lesser degree are very supportive financially and, and consultation on environmental issues. We would also, we also undertake many projects on Chittering managed land. So that's an example of a, um, some local governments that 
are very supportive. So I think there's there's a range definitely of whether the local governments are supportive or not, but it sounds like there are, you know, I've had reports of some that, yeah, they've got amazingly good relationships with all their friends groups, but, and that, and I guess that's why that project has been talked about of getting, and that um, the forum or whatever that is that Melanie's got organized, is organizing from Wolga about getting these um, good examples and, um, getting the other local governments to come along and find out what these good examples are. So is there anyone who hasn't said something that wants to comment on um, plans for this year? What's coming up? Or what has come out of our um, mentee exercise? So what do we think about the um, regional forums and face-to-face -face catch ups in different regions? Has anyone got any ideas? <laughs> I'll um, say something then, finally. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, one thing I've been thinking about was uh, in particular, our isolation out based out in Pirup for the Blackwood Basin Group and um, yeah. our ability to network with other land care organisations and, like you said, uh, local governments and business people, corporate people. So one thing I'm sort of playing around with in my head for this year is looking for a source of funding to uh, organise a business networking um, group uh, for the land care organisations in the southwest to get the organisations together. It could be each month on a different organisation's patch on one of their projects or in their office. Uh, and each time invite along a couple of uh, outsiders, a couple of business people, a couple of local government uh, representatives, and just increase our ability to network and get in the faces of those local government people, essentially. I think that's probably going to be the best way to build those relationships and get something happening. Have you got a bit of competition there, Clint? <laughs> I do, yes. There's some uh, guinea fowl in the background and they make quite a racket. Okay. <laughs> it's a really good point you raised, Clint, and that, you know, that isolation is a risk to the individuals in organisations as well as the organisations. It's a real challenge and... I've done a lot of work in remote Australia and those kind of ideas you're coming up with um, are terrific. Lower Blackwood, LCDC has a great model called um, something uh, drop-in, you know, sort of from four o'clock till 6.30. It's not late at night because they're sort of a way out of town as well. And we can put you in touch with them to hear about what they do and how they do it. We, one of our um, funding objectives under the state NRM grant that we got in 2020 is precisely to assist you to develop something like that kind of um, land care group catch up. Um, and, and it's very place based. It's not for us to tell people how that might look. Everyone finds their own solution that works on their patch. So Kylie and I will certainly follow up with you on that. Yes. Yeah, we want to find out what works best for the groups and we know it's not like a one size fits all. So definitely keen to support what you are already doing. Um, and if we can help in any way, um, we'd love to do that and help with the networking side of it and getting in touch with other people, so. Thank you. Okay, well, if there's, we've got one minute left. So if anyone's got a hot question or comment they wanna bring up, um, if you have any other thoughts after the meeting and you want to um, email, you can email us. And um, I'm just putting my email in the chat. And if anyone's got a last minute um, environmentally based joke to tell, we're happy to have a joke as well as a closing <laughs> comment because it's always nice to have a laugh in land care, isn't it? 
we do we do hear every day in our work about tough subjects um, we know that there's you know a genuine thing out there people suffering from environment related depression um, you know we have connections to people who can support people if you know anyone who's needing some assistance with that and the important thing to remember is in a gathering like today with 20 people there's something like 2,000 years of practice wisdom you know in in how to address what's going on and we're all doing it every day and we're doing a great job so keep it up everyone it's wonderful thank you and thanks for for being here yeah, thank you so much, everyone, for coming along. And we'll definitely be considering your responses and to the questions and have another look at my, what we might offer this year. And that we're generally looking at doing the land care checks in once a month this year. So, but we are actually having um, another one in two weeks just because this month's theme was regenerative agriculture. So our next land care check sim will be on regenerative agriculture and it's on Tuesday the 1st of March at 1.30. So thank you once again, everyone, for attending and um, hope you enjoyed this session and we hope to see you around and hear from you. And thank you. Bye. Enjoy the thank rest of your day. Thank you very much, Paul. Thank you. Thanks. Love you to see you. Thank you.